it's Ray back again, and I'm going to go through uh, the essays for F583. I was asked to do this by a few students. This is the more difficult part of the course. This is A2. So what I've done is I've collected some essays, uh, and I'm going to show you a list of what's available. Now I'm going to do three of them on YouTube for all of you to have access to for free. And there's actually 20 total, and I'm not going to make videos for all of them, just the first three. But if you want a copy of this essay pack, I'm going to put a link in the video description telling you how you can buy it. So I'll do the first three for you, no problem. And then the 20, if you really want the entire pack, you can follow the link to purchase the, the, the entire collection. It's about 20 different essays looking at past F583 questions and the previous paper 2583, which was still work and leisure. And I'll show you some samples of the essays it may include. So you're going to first have a section for market structure and competitive behavior. And I've taken some 15 mark and some 20 mark questions, and they're going to be here. Uh, also, these are not all included, but uh, I have taken some. Then I move on to section two, which is labor demand, supply, and wage determination. Some of these essays have been included in the 50 page pack, which is to 20 essays. And finally, we are going to be looking at section three, which is market failure and the role of government and trade unions in labor markets. And some of these essays again will be included. So I haven't done all of these. Uh, there's a ton, but I have done about 20. And if you're interested, follow the link. You can buy the pack and help to uh, help you to revise. So what I want to do is now jump into the first essay I'm going to take a look at, which asks you to explain how a perfectly competitive industry is economically efficient. Now, in this essay, what we really want to try to do is the following. So I'm going to make sure you can see this nice and clear. All right, maybe I'll drop this down to about 180%. All right, now let's start with a, a definition of perfectly competitive, and then we would probably want to move towards explaining what does economically efficient mean. So perfect competition is a market structure with many buyers and sellers where entry and exit into the market is costless. There are many rival firms who sell identical products, so a single firm is unable to charge to change the price it charges as consumers will automatically switch to its competitors. When discussing economic efficiency, Three different areas need to be considered, allocative, productive, and dynamic. Now, we're probably not going to touch dynamic, but if we do allocative and productive, we're cool. Now, in this essay, that's a great start. So we should probably jump to what productive efficiency is. First, productive efficiency occurs if a firm is using the least possible amount of scarce resources to produce maximum output. And so they will be producing at the lowest average cost, at the bottom of the average cost curve. In a perfectly competitive market, productive efficiency is not always achieved in the short run, but it is generally attained in the long run. This is because if firms are making supernormal profits, this will mean that their price is above their average cost. This is demonstrated in the diagram below, and we should probably add here at price P star on the individual firm diagram. The achievement of supernormal profits will attract new firms into the market, increasing market supply from S to S1, which will drive down prices due to new, uh, let's see, let's say new businesses. You can say new businesses entering competition. So new businesses entering the market, right? Or entering the industry. Let's change that to industry. Okay, this will continue to push down prices to push down. We can make this a little bit more specific market prices until prices leveled at the lowest point on the average cost curve, therefore achieving productive efficiency. Price can fall below this point. Firms running a loss will be forced out of the market. So here we have P star, Q star, which represents the initial starting point when this firm is producing at price point P star. We can see that price equal marginal cost here allows for some supernormal profit, which is this area above the average cost curve. So, uh, and this little square here actually, so where price hits marginal cost is what we're selling at. You drop it down to get, get our quantity, and then we can see that where it hits the average cost curve, and we take that across, that box is our supernormal profit. 
but they're describing new entrants to the market, increasing supply, shifting S to S1, which drives down the price from P to P1. And then we see at this point, marginal cost equals average revenue equals average cost. And it's at the lowest point, right? So there would be little point in firms producing goods at the lowest possible cost if there was no demand for the product. So this is a new point analysis. Hence why allocative efficiency needs to be considered. This occurs when the selling price of a product is equal to its marginal cost of production, which is shown in the diagram above. This means that the price paid by the consumer represents the true cost of producing the last unit. It also represents the marginal utility that they get from consuming the good that consumers get. In both the short run and long run, a perfectly competitive industry achieves allocative efficiency as price remains equal to marginal cost. Okay, that's true. We can see that price is here, marginal cost. Price here is equal to marginal cost because price is equal to marginal revenue in this situation. On balance, it is clear that a perfectly competitive market is allocatively efficient as price equals marginal cost in both the short run and long run. Although a perfectly competitive market achieves productive efficiency in the long run, it may not. I say it may not in the short run, in the short term. In the economic world, however, efficiency in the long run is most important compared with in the short run. Nah, that's a general general statement, but I would say this person did a pretty good job of explaining productive and allocative efficiency. Much better job on productive efficiency than allocative, but they made the point clear. You've got the diagram drawn in. It could be referenced a little bit more, but I would say it is pretty excellent, clear. There's no discussion because it's not necessary for 15 marks. It's how does something work, right? Look at the diagram and explain short run, long run. So this, I would say, is excellent, clear, and concise. It covers allocative and productive efficiency. It introduces but does not discuss dynamic efficiency, but it's not necessary in order to get full marks. So this is up to L3, and I gave it 15. I might be harsh and say 13. So let's say instead of full, I'll give it high, L3 marks. All right, if you want this essay along with the others, you know, feel free to look in the video description below. Follow the link and you should be able to find where you can buy the PDF there. Thank you.